Well, good morning. Um, I'm working on the editing for the video uh, about the electric fan uh, for the forklift and realized that I didn't have a very good introduction. Actually, I didn't have any one at all. I just started working on the fan and so I thought I would uh, just do a quick recap of uh, the previous video and you can go back there and watch it. It's, uh, you know, in the playlist for the forklift. Uh, but I'll just give you a quick recap and why I'm doing what I'm doing, and then we'll jump into the video. Um, so in the first two videos, I got it running, figured out, what, um, you know, that I could make a move. The second video, um, I brought it back to the house, or it was back of the house, and I started going through everything. And uh, there are a number of issues that, that will come up in this that, that will create uh, probably three or four videos in total. Um, but the one I'm working on now is the fan. So th that fan hangs off of the thermostat housing and creates a tremendous amount of force and twist on it. And uh, I said in the last one, well, I, I'll just get a new one. And I put a little note down there that said, oh, this turns out to be a very, very rare part. Well, there's only one in the world that I could find. I'm sure there's actually more than one. But from my standpoint, I found one. It was $950. So it was literally less money for me to go ahead and just fabricate an electric fan for this thing, which is what you're gonna see now. So <clears throat> with that said, I'm gonna jump into this uh, uh, creating of the electric fan, get that installed, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the process and you'll join me for the rest of the video. So. Here we go, let's dive into this and get started building that electric fan for the forklift. Good evening, it's been about a week since I filmed anything on the forklift project and uh, that's because I had to order some parts and work and life and everything else that gets in the way. Um, but I've, I've got the parts that I need and I'll be replacing the fuel pump, I'll be replacing a bunch of the electronics I'll be replacing the thermostat housing. Um, I'll explain what that is uh, later on, why I have to replace that. And as a result of that thermostat ha housing being broken, um, I, I decided to go to an electric fan. And I'll explain that when I get out to the forklift in, in the daylight hours. But for now, what I have to do is I have to take this, I don't know if you can see it here. This fan shroud, it was a manual fan. Make a new one. Make a new one to put the electric fan on. And that is the material I'm gonna to use to create the new fan, fan shroud. That'll be tonight's project. And where it's going to go is, um, well, obviously it's going to go on the radiator. So let me take you outside and I'll show you where that is. So as you'll see, it is nighttime out. It's nighttime and it's raining. The, uh, the fan used to hang off the uh, thermostat housing here and that broke off and then it's set in this shroud up in here so the new shroud that i'm going to build is going to come up over the top of this and the top of that i believe so that i've got some clearance and uh have the fans sitting there it'll be electric motor and then this is set in you'll see I don't know if you can see it right here, about three eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to have to bring that out a little bit. So tonight's project is to make a new fan shroud. And I decided that was a good project tonight since it is raining outside. It's dark and I don't really want to be outside tonight. So let's jump back in the shop. Let's make a fan shroud.
first thing we're going to do tonight is to get uh, the fan shroud laid out. To get the shroud laid out, to you have as little waste as possible because this stuff is not cheap. So I'm going to cut this off where I need to. Um, mark my holes and then cut the center out once once I get everything kind of laid out here. So I've decided that my height wise here I want to go 19 and a half inches. You'll see here on the edges that this is flat and this is up about 3 eighths of an inch. That's where the cooling fins come up into the top and the bottom housing. And so I want to cover over the top of that and then I'll have a rubber strip here to try to keep some vibrations down. So 19 and a half inches as I look here is a little bit bigger. That is 18 and a half inches right there so I'm going to have to cut this out just a little bit but that's fine. If I go 19 and a half inches, I'm going to have more room than I need, and, and that's not a bad thing. So we're going to start out, and we're going to come over here. I think I had this as 31 inches, if I remember right. So 30, 30 and a half inches. And if I make it 31, that, that's not a problem. I can trim it down. So I'm going to come over 31 inches and down 19 and a half inches. And that should give me plenty, plenty of room to work with. So let's get it marked out. So I'm going to come down 19 and a half inches. Right there. Right there. All right, I forgot my measurement. 31. So that brings me out to 30. Let me get another inch off of that. I'll come out to there. Once again, these aren't real super critical measurements. Um, I'm going to do some trimming on this once it gets on there, so it's not a massive deal that it's absolutely perfect. But this gets me started. So, next step get out the, uh, uh, the the grinder, angle grinder, and grind this off. So I will most likely time lapse this and uh, um, just make it. So it goes through this real quickly because this will undoubtedly be loud. Yes, I know that's aluminum and it won't stick to it, but it'll. It'll hold it in place enough that I can get it cut. Yuck! <sighs> I am glad that is done. Okay, with the initial cuts done, now I'm going to flip it over and it really doesn't, 
for my purposes, it doesn't matter which side is out. I know this is the finished side, but because it's on the back of a forklift, I don't think it really matters. So, we're just going to use that as a marking surface and keep going. So, with the, uh, with the rough area cut out, I'm now going to lay the fan shroud over and start getting my basic measurements here. I'm a little bit wide, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, I'm going to get the holes so that they're, they're lined up. Um, halfway up and down and then lay the fan out. So the fan will actually sit um, almost completely inside of the fend area, which is good. So I don't I don't have to do a whole lot of messing around. I'll probably end up putting putting these holes like this just so that I have more room. But this will fit very, very nicely in that area which is exactly what I wanted. Okay, this is where the fan belongs. So for now, I'm just going to make a drawing of the outside of the fan. And I will have to obviously cut this inside, figure out what that is in a while. I think I made my lines too far in. Yeah. Yeah, it gives me an idea. That's all I need right now. A general idea because I'll end up taking this and cutting it back. Oh yeah, that's real thin. So even this is, even this line that I have here will give it more structural integrity than it needs. And I have some reinforcements to go along here, here, and here to keep it from flexing and vibrating and tearing up the uh, tearing up the um, uh, the radiator once I get done. So now I think we're going to be in really good shape with this. The fan is sitting inside the housing where I want it. And uh, that should work. It's about five and a half inches. It's about five inches. That should be closer. All right, I think I marked this up. Start doing some cutting. This fan shroud actually sat higher on the, uh, on the radiator. So I'll have more of a cutout on the bottom than I will on the top to get the, the radiator and everything to fit. But this should work. Only one way to find out, that's to cut it. I think what I'm going to do, because it's getting late, yeah, it's getting late. I'm going to save this cut for tomorrow when I can get it out in the daylight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill these holes and this, set it down in there, start fitting it, make sure that this works the way it needs to, then drill these holes, start doing my build up, and finish it up. So until tomorrow morning, we're just gonna have to wait. So last night I laid out the basics on where I wanted the shroud to go, and uh, today what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill these four holes first. I'm going to do the cutouts for the uh, for the fan or for the uh, for the water inlet and outlet, 
I'm going to get that set up the way it needs to be, and then once and, and and once that's all done, test fitted and everything's ready to go, I'll cut this final hole in it, and then I'll start doing the rest of the layout with the fan. So let's uh, jump in and get started. That should get us in the ballpark. Alright, next step, take it outside and uh, see how well it fits. Now that we're outside and the weather's a little bit better, this top actually is not bolted down. It'll just come up. So I'm going to see if I can't get it off. The choke cable is uh, run through the, the top of the hood here. So I may just leave it sitting like that and just see if I can work around it because I'm being lazy. You know what? I'm not going to be lazy. I'm going to go fix this. Really pretty simple. All I need to do is just loosen these up, slide this. out through there and back on which is the way it should be anyway so might as well fix it as you can see this is not stock somebody uh, jerry rigged that so that it would work with the cable but it's not right Regardless, that'll fix it. Man, everything on these is heavy. But the good news is, now I've got really super easy access to everything to put it back together. And that that honestly is worth a lot. So the other thing that I'm just finding out as I look at this, the radiator sits in between these two frames here, which means that I'm going to have to cut down, um, I'm going to have to cut my width down so that, uh, so that I can fit in between here. So be a little more cutting than I thought I was going to have, but that's okay. Don't really want to pull this off, but it probably will be much easier without it on. by much. I think I like this. As you can see this is a very very precision measurement here. Yeah that ought to be about right. Then I'm going to grab a tape measure, measure it up how far I needed to cut it. Alright, let's get this back inside, cut it, bring it back out, fit it, keep going until I get it where I want it, we'll get the shims in it, and then uh, we'll move on from there. So I have my rough measurements from outside, just going to transfer them over here, and uh, we're just going to cut this out real quick. All 
All right, back out we'll go. Okay, made the cuts. Let's see how close I am. Oh, that looks good. Right now I just need to make sure that this is gonna fit up. And it is. Goes in beautifully. I think this point in time I need to close in the gaps on the outside of this and then I'm ready to cut it out and put it on. I'm pretty happy with this. This is going to work really well. What I'm going to do now is to fill in this gap with some uh, just some weather stripping for doors. That should seal it up pretty well. Let's take a look. Oh, that's beautiful. That is absolutely perfect. All right. Time to go cut the, uh, the hole for the fan and get that mounted. All right, I'm back in the shop. The shroud fits. So I'm going to cut the center out and then start getting ready to do the final mounting of the fan. But I don't remember which direction this fan blows, which side goes down. So I'll pull the battery out, see which direction it goes. I just tested the fan and it will blow this way. So I'm going to set it up with holes like this. We're going to do the cutouts, do the wiring, and we should be good to go. Okay. That should not allow the fan to sit in there unobstructed. Well, I do believe, ready to pull the covering off this, um, get it bolted down, take it over and bolt it down to the uh, radiator. So, I'm pretty excited about this. And this was much, much cheaper than what I would have had to have spent to try to buy a shroud and modify it. So this was a huge savings. I have some pieces for cross braces to run through here, but I honestly don't think I need them. I think this is going to be solid enough without any additional bracing. If it turns out it's not, I can always come back in and add the bracing later on. It's easy to do. Alright, it's time to start bolting this up. I'm going to use a flat washer on the back, come up through this way, and uh, get everything locked down, then cut the, cut the ends of it off. That way I've got easier access to it. So, hopefully that'll be easy.
and hopefully it will be strong enough. <laughs> but, uh, then I won't need putting any additional supports on it, but if I do it will. I'm stopping and looking because I may, may want to bring this out on the other side. I'm going to go check on the forklift and be back. I'll leave it like it is for right now. I may try to go off to the solenoid side. Alright, that's pretty tight. I think that's ready. Yeah, that's super solid. It doesn't need to be braced, I don't think. We'll find out. If it does, I'll brace it. With that said, let's go outside and install it. Well, editing the videos, I realized that uh, that was a good stopping point. Uh, the fans together, the shrouds together, the fan on it. Now it's time to put it on the uh, onto the forklift. So that's good stopping point for now, for this video. Um, there are uh, some challenges that come up and some things that I don't pay attention to uh, that cost me to do a little extra work along the way. And, uh, but you'll see that in the next video for now. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I would enjoy getting your comments and uh, you know thoughts and, how can I make these videos better? Um, like I've said in the past, I'm brand new to this, so I'm still kind of finding my way on the video editing and what I include and what I don't include. So if there's something you, you didn't see that you would like to see or uh, something that you saw too much of, uh, please let me know down in the comments. Um, that'll help me produce better videos, uh, things that are more interesting. Uh, for you to watch. So with that said, thank you very much for your time. Please like and subscribe and pass this on to your friends. It uh, definitely helps a brand new channel like mine grow. And uh, don't be afraid to go out, try something new and get your hands dirty. So have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.